verify this is from so and so. If somebody claims this is from a messenger 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, can you verify this? Do you have any verification, any means by which to check that these are the original text or written down authentic revelation from that messenger? And also, are these the original documents? Or has there been changes in these documents? So all these common sense approaches can be used to see if you have access to the truth or not. And this is very important. The good news is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always sent messengers with the truth, with revelation, with wahi, with guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Throughout the ages, throughout the ages, there's always been messengers sent. Yes, there's gaps in between, but after every few years, there's always been messengers, sometimes more than one in the same town, more than two, three in the same, uh, sent to the same people. But there's always been access to the truth, always been access to revelation, to guidance, to wahi, to the instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and this message has always been one, same message, from same Rabb, same creator. And they've all, it's always been sent through trustworthy, protected, truthful messengers, alayhim as -salam. Because without, without the trustworthiness and the truthfulness and those messengers being protected, there is no guarantee a human being can, re can receive the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not abuse it and not change it or not hide it or not cover it. It's impossible. Any normal human being, unless they have been selected, prepared, and protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's impossible for an ordinary human being to bear this responsibility, to, to receive the message, to be truthful for it, to, to sacrifice his own uh, wealth and family and honor and dignity and standing for the truth, even though everything is going against that person. Most human beings will fail. But the messengers, all of the prophets, they are chosen, selected, preserved, protected. They're ma'asum. They are protected from falling into any of these types of errors. They are protected from sins. This is why we can trust the, the messengers, alayhim as -salam. So distortions only come into these books when human beings afterwards their followers and the followers of the followers, when they get hold of the book and they're given responsibility to teach the book, to convey the book, this is when distortion has appeared in any of the books, except for the Qur'an, except for the Qur'an. So as we know, the main reason for this distortion is because those teachers, those people who were responsible for it, succumb to their personal desires, to their weakness, either for authority, either for position, either for money, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in many, many places, that they sold the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a small, meager price, for something of the dunya, something cheap. So often it's the desires of those who have been given the responsibility. But one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear in this Qur'an, that all of the messengers, the Nabiyyin, all of the uh, Anbiya, the, the, the Rusul, the messengers who have been given this responsibility, all of them carried it out 100%, without any distortion, without any change, without covering even one letter of the revelation. So this is, this is a fact which is conveyed in the Qur'an. And this is what these few ayahs, the subject matter, is around. So, it's really important because ultimately you will find people talking about there's many religions, many faiths, many different books. But our question as believers to everybody else, our question as Muslims, is that there are, there's no proof that any of the other books have remained preserved if they are from a messenger, and there are books, that are from messengers, there's no proof that they have remained unchanged, unaltered, 
preserved in their original form. This is number one. Number two, there's many, many other faiths and books who claim these are from God, these are from messengers, but there's no proof that they, in fact, are at all from any messengers or anybody. Except for the Qur'an, we can prove it is from Muhammad وسلم, as in he conveyed it, he received it, and he conveyed it. And we can prove that it hasn't undergone any changes. It's preserved in its original. These two things cannot be said about any other book. So this is what we as believers, we must understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins verse, uh, ayah number 78. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيقًا يَلْغُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ لِتَحْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ There are some amongst them who distort the book with their tongues to make you think that this is from the book. But it is not from the book. It is not what the book says. They say it is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. And so they attribute lies to Allah knowingly. They attribute lies to Allah knowingly. So this was this verse and the following verses, uh, Ibn Kathir says that it was revealed during the presence of the deputation of the Christians from Najran, which we've talked about in previous sessions. Much of Ali Imran, some of the verses that deal with, you know, Isa alayhi salam, Tawheed, and how um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send any messengers to be worshipped. Rather, he sent all messengers to proclaim the message of Tawheed, to worship Allah alone. So this was during the deputation from Najran who visited the Prophet in Medina. And some of them, the, the Christians said, that um, they said to the Prophet O oh Muhammad وسلم, do you want to, us to worship you the way Christians worship Jesus, son of Mary? He said, he responded according to this, uh, according to this narration, I seek refuge with Allah that we worship someone other than Allah or call on others to do so. Allah Almighty has not sent us to do that. Thereupon, this verse or these verses were revealed. So this, this particular verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that some of them, not all of them, some of them, of the people of the book, they distort Allah's words with their tongues. And they change it from their appropriate places. Yalwuna means, literally means to change the letter or the sound or the word. It can also mean changing uh, the actual words in, in the book or when you read it, you change its sound so it means something else. You distort the meaning, you distort the sound, you distort the pronunciation. They do, they do this to deceive the people who are ignorant by making it appear that these words are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they may be reading and changing the words and whoever's listening, they will think it's all from the book. If it's from the book, then it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But these people who are doing this, they know that they are making this up. They know they are distorting. They know they are creating lies against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Bukhari, he reported, rahmatullah alayhi, that Ibn Abbas said that the ayah means they alter and add things, although none amongst Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books. They alter and distort their apparent meanings. So of course, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, whatever is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in his possession, the original book that is with him, that is preserved, nobody can change that. Whatever is given to the messengers, nobody can change that. Whatever is written down and then passed on to people to teach, to, to the followers, and, and to the teachers, of course, anybody can change something that's written down in a book. Written down, this part they can change, but they can actually never alter the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, مَا كَانَ لِبَشَرِ 
أن يؤتيه الله الكتاب والحكم والنبوة ثم يقول ثم يقول للناس كونوا عبادا لي من دون الله ولكن كونوا ربانيين بما كنتم تعلمون الكتاب وبما كنتم تدرسون الله سبحانه وتعالى says that it is not appropriate for someone who Allah has blessed with scripture wisdom and prophethood to say to people worship me instead of Allah rather he would say be devoted to the worship of your Lord alone in accordance with what these prophets read in the scripture and what they taught so no prophet ever called وَمَا كَانَ مَا كَانَ لِبَشَرِ it is not appropriate for any bashar, any human being of course the verse is referring here mainly indicating to Isa alayhi salam it's referring to Isa alayhi salam because the Christians say that Isa alayhi salam he commanded us to worship him he claimed to be uh, divine etc na'udhu billahi min dhalik he commanded us to worship him here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said could have said that it's, it's not appropriate for a messenger or he could have narrowed it down to Isa alayhi salam. He could have said, it is not appropriate for Isa alayhi salam to have said that. But no, he widened it. Ma kana li basharin. It is not appropriate, it's not possible. It's not possible for even a human being, any human being to do this. Never mind a messenger. Never mind Isa alayhi salam. So to emphasize the impossibility of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used a very general term, included all human beings. It's not possible for Bashar, any human being to do this. Especially when they've been selected as a messenger. So he makes it clear here that no prophet ever called people to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, it affirms the infallibility of the prophets. What does that mean? It means that they are protected from making any of these kind of mistakes. They are protected from distorting the book. They are protected from miscommunicating the book. They've been given the ability and protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to convey the book as it was meant to be conveyed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here raises the station of all of the messengers that they have this huge standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affirming that they all conveyed the message it's not possible for them to change this message it's not possible for them to make mistakes in conveying this message it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected them and given them this ability so anybody who claims and is referring to the people of the book that whatever you claim is batil whatever you claim is invalid has no basis because it is impossible for any messenger to say other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to say in, in terms of revelation. This is also not just to, you know, not just to the messengers that they couldn't have said this, right? This is also a criticism of their priests and rabbis or whoever amongst them knowingly took this message, knowingly wrote it down and said, this is from Isa alayhi salam, that there's three in one trinity or son of God, etc. This is impossible according to the Quran, according to what has been revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, this is impossible. Not just the prophets wouldn't do that, but this is chastising and criticizing those people who are responsible for doing that. Because if they are claiming that this is from Isa salam, then the Quran has showed here, it cannot be from Isa salam. It must be from you yourselves, you as teachers, you as uh, people of authority in your religion, you have done this. And this is wrong because this is impossible. It could not have been the messengers. But this is also a, a chastisement or, or a reminder um, to anybody else coming afterwards, including the believers, including the Muslims. Even it's narrated that a group of uh, Muslims came up to the Prophet and they said that, Ya Muhammad, 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, they wouldn't call him by his name. Ya Rasulullah, they said, um, we greet you like we greet everybody else, ordinary Muslims, we say salam to you. That greeting is like very ordinary, we do this amongst ourselves. But you are somebody Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised, you are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Should we not, you know, um, prostrate to you in, as a greeting? Not in worship, but as a greeting, should we not bow our heads down and prostrate to you, just like others do? And this is where the Prophet Sallallahu uh, rebuked them and said, no, this is, this is not possible. It is not allowed for one to prostrate to another human being. So again, some scholars say this verse was also revealed as a rebuke to that question, as, as a refutation to that question as well. But as I said, this criticism goes to their teachers. But the messengers now, there's no more messengers. The message of the Qur'an, the teachings of the deen, lay on the shoulders, the responsibility to convey and to teach, lay on the shoulders of the teachers of this deen, on the imams, the scholars, right? The people of authority in religion, in deen, it is upon them, the people of Qur'an, the people who carry the Qur'an. The responsibility is on them. And it's the same thing. They have to fulfill the trust. The messengers are no more. But the, every single teacher of Islam, every single imam, a scholar of Islam, they have a huge responsibility that they must convey the truth of our, the fundamentals, the usul of our deen the usul of the pillars of practice, those things which are clear-cut. We cannot change these things. They must be taught as it is in the Qur'an, in the Sunnah, in the source text, as it is in the Sharia. This must be conveyed, this must be taught. It's a huge, huge responsibility. And it's a big warning for those who out of ignorance change the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or out of pursuing worldly desires will make halal into haram, or haram into halal. Out of worldly desires, out of seeking fame, wealth, position with somebody. So this is a dire warning for even the teachers of this deen, that nobody has this right. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that the ulama, the scholars, are the inheritors of the Prophet ﷺ. The scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. So it is their responsibility now to convey it with truth, with courage, especially those things which cannot be changed in the deen, those fundamentals of iman, the pillars of aqidah, the pillars of worship, that the salah is fard, the fasting is fard, zakat is fard. You can't change these things. These must be conveyed without fearing anybody. These must be conveyed clearly. These must be not changed or altered for, for any other reasons. Then here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that وَلَكِنْ كُونُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تُعَلِّمُونَ الْكِتَابِ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرُسُونَ So here Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he said رَبَّانِيُّون, what does it mean? Someone who's رَبَّانِي from the word Rabb, Rabb is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer, you know, the one who nurtures, yeah, the one who provides and sustains everybody. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, so this word means like be rabbani, means connect yourself to that quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reflect that quality, be rabbani, reflect that quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in yourself, be connected. So when people see you, hear you, when you teach them, you remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remind them of the hereafter. But in terms of how you teach people, Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he said, and several others, they said, Rabbaniyun means hikmah, wise, right? Learned, the one who has ilm. Three things, hikmah, wisdom, have ilm, to be learned, and forbearing, hilm. Three things, three qualities. It's not good enough just to convey the message. It must be conveyed with knowledge, ilm. You must know what you're talking about. You must have studied this deen before you go around conveying it. 
but it must also be conveyed with hikmah. This is always, you will always find this in, in the Quran. Al Kitab wal Hikmah. The Prophet was taught the Kitab and Hikmah. What is Hikmah? There's difference of opinion on what Hikmah is, but overall the summary is it's the Sunnah of the Prophet. But it's also, which is, there's no contradiction because the Sunnah itself is the application of the Quran, the practical application of the Quran in your daily lives, how the Prophet applied the Quran is the hikmah, how the Prophet applied the directives, the guidance, the teachings of the Qur'an in practical living daily experience, that is the sunnah. So it's how you apply the Qur'an, how you apply the deen, this is the hikmah, this is the wisdom. You have to know when to apply what. You can't, you can't just say I'm enjoining the good and forbidding the evil blanket for everyone, every place, every situation. You have to know which things you are allowed to enjoin the good on, which things you can forbid the evil on. You have to know these things. You have to know what is halal, what is haram, where is ikhtilaf, where, where there's difference of opinion on an issue. You need to know these things before you go out condemning people, before you go out saying this is haram or this is halal. So, and you must do it with forbearance, hilm, patience. You know, don't be arrogant. Don't be hasty when you're teaching somebody. And another meaning of uh, somebody who's uh, Rabbani is that they teach gradually. They teach someone gradually, step by step, until they take them to the end goal, to the destination. So it's not a crash course, two hour intensive, one day intensive. That's it. You're going to just download uh, all the information down to them and they're going to be um, transformed. No. Rabbani is the one who teaches, who develops, who nurtures, just like you nurture a plant. You, you, you sow the seed, you have to water it, you have to look after the soil, you have to till the soil, and then you have to watch it grow and keep on watering it. This is the Rabbani, the one who teaches step by step, gradually. And this is the methodology of the Qur'an. The Qur'an was not revealed in one book, in one go. It was revealed over 23 years. It was revealed over a number of years. And slowly, slowly, the Meccan verses are different from the Medinan verses. The Sharia was implemented step by step, in stages, gradually. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, you know, if alcohol, if wine was made haram in Mecca, nobody would have been able to implement that. Right? Because there's preparation gradually, Rabbani. The teaching of the Quran is such, it's gradual. This is Islam. You don't do everything. Of course, we're not, talk, we're not saying now those things which are haram, you can do stage by stage. No. Whatever's been ruled, it's been ruled now. But in terms of the approach to da'wah, to teaching, to tarbiyah, even tarbiyah, the word Rabb is in there, isn't it? It's to nurture slowly, gradually, until the person reaches the objective or reaches the end destination. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تُعَلِّمُونَ الْكِتَابِ وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرُسُونَ Because of what you were teaching the book and what you were studying of it. And therefore, uh, one of the uh, commentators said that whoever learns the Qur'an deserves to become a faqih. This is the whole point. The Qur'an is, has been revealed. Yes, people should memorize without a doubt to preserve the Qur'an and to preserve the chain, the, uh, the isnads, and to preserve this tradition of, of memorization without a doubt. But the Qur'an has been revealed to reflect, to think, to understand, to act by it. You can only do this if you understand the Qur'an, if you understand and study the Qur'an. So whoever is, is involved in teaching Qur'an, st reading Qur'an. Don't just stop after you memorized, or don't just stop after you can read the Qur'an correctly with tajweed. No, study the Qur'an, learn it, implement it, follow it in your daily lives. This is what it is. This is why he said that whoever learns the Qur'an deserves to become a faqih, meaning he should have full understanding, should have understanding of the directives of the Qur'an. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us to do? 
And it's not just uh, halal and haram. There's so many guidance, points of guidance for all of our stages of lives, all of our areas of lives. So there's so much guidance in terms of how to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to become people of the hereafter, how to bear challenges, tribulations, hardship, how to overcome these things, how to succeed as an ummah. So many points of guidance in the Qur'an. This can only be achieved if we study the Qur'an, if we become fuqaha of the Qur'an, we understand the Qur'an. Then in the next verse, ayah number 80, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا يَأْمُرَكُمْ أَن تَتَّخِذُوا الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ أَرْبَابًا أَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he would never ask you to take angels and prophets as lords. Would he ask you to disbelieve after you have submitted? You know, the Prophet Wasallam. And any of the prophets, they do not command worship other than Allah. This is so clear. He would not do that. Whoever calls for worshipping other than Allah will have called to kufr. It's a contradiction. Anybody coming as a messenger on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then says, worship me, this is a contradiction. It's kufr after iman. Would Allah command you to kufr after you have submitted to iman, to Islam? No, impossible. As many other ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ And we did not send any messenger before you, but we revealed to him saying, none has the right to be worshipped but I, so worship me. This is uh, surah number 21, 25. Other places in the Quran, same message. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ And verily we have sent among every ummah a messenger proclaiming worship Allah alone and avoid the taghut. Taghut, all the false gods, all the false deities. So this is very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always sent messengers asking them to proclaim the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So by these few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear that the claims of the people of the book who claim that Isa alayhi said to worship him is completely baseless because this is not the way of any of the messengers. This is a contradiction. You can't say <laughs> monotheism and worship, believing in one God when you then say he has a son or that you need to worship a prophet. It doesn't, it's a contradiction according to the Quranic view. The Quranic view sees that as a blatant contradiction. It goes against everything that every messenger has been sent with. And all of the messengers, as the next ayah explains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتَ لما آتيتكم من كتاب من كتاب وحكمة ثم جاءكم رسول مصدق لما معكم لا تؤمنون به ولا تنصرونه قال أأقررتم وأخذتم على ذلك ذلك إسري قالوا أقررنا قال فاشهدوا وأنا معكم من الشاهدين in in ayah number eighty one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next verse says, Remember when Allah made a covenant with the prophets, saying, Now that I have given you the book and wisdom, if there comes to you a messenger confirming what you have, you must believe in him and support him. He added, Do you affirm this covenant, this agreement, and accept this commitment? They all said, Yes, we do. Allah said, Then bear witness, and I too am a witness. So taking the pledge from the prophets to believe in Muhammad Wasallam, The key thing in this ayah that if there comes to you a messenger confirming what you have, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking an agreement, taking a covenant, a promise from all of the messengers. When he created them, taking a promise from all of the messengers that 
Now that I've given you the book and wisdom, if there comes to you a messenger confirming what you have, A, the promise here and the agreement here is if any messenger comes while they are a prophet, that has happened, right? Um, Isa alayhi salam came when Yahya alayhi salam was alive as a messenger. Um, or he, he, he foretold of Isa alayhi salam, he would have followed him as well. But they killed Yahya alayhi salam. But Lut alayhi salam was in the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Harun alayhi salam was in the time of Musa alayhi salam. So there's many times where different prophets and messengers are there and Allah sends or adds another prophet. So one meaning is that if another messenger comes, the command to the current messenger is also to acknowledge that messenger and to follow him if he's been given more authority or vice versa. The other meaning is that some narrations have that all of the messengers were given, taken a promise that if Muhammad وسلم, was to come in your time, then you would follow him. You would drop your responsibility, your sharia, and you would follow Muhammad وسلم, if he came whilst you're alive in your time. This is the meaning of this verse. So all of them said that we bear witness. We do, we accept this, we bear witness. And Allah said, then bear witness, and I too am a witness. So none of the messengers um, would ever go against another prophet. Isa salam, is not going to come with something new, completely contradicts what, what, what the thousands of messengers before him have come with the message of Tawheed. Impossible. He cannot contradict anything in terms of the fundamentals of Iman, of Tawheed. Impossible. And all of the messengers were given this promise and taken this covenant that if Muhammad وسلم, was to come, then you follow him. And we know the later prophets, definitely even in their books, as the Quran says, that you will find it in their books, the Torah and the Injil, that the signs of Muhammad وسلم, are mentioned in there. The fact that there will be a Nabi coming, a messenger, a Rasul coming after them, and different names, Ahmad, or perhaps other names are given in, in, in some of the other books. But it's all there. And the command is to follow him. So all of these things that the people of the book make excuses, that no, our book says this, our book says that, the Quran rejects that. And the Quran um, calls everybody to follow the one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to follow the one deen, Islam, which is, not just, which is not just a way of life after Muhammad Wasallam. It's the way of life from Adam alayhi salam. The Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same in all messages or in all eras, except there's some changes in the rules, but the fundamentals are the same, that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a test. You're sent here as a test, and on the day of judgment, you will be held accountable, and you should only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the messengers. This is the message all of the prophets came with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these few verses has summarized this key message and also refuted that any possibility of any messenger changing the book or coming with something that contradicts Tawheed, impossible. And the warning to those teachers, to those followers of any deen who knowingly change any of the teachings of this deen. So we'll stop here, inshallah, today. Um, just this last verse we'll just read um, because next next few verses are one section. فَمَنْ تَوَلَّ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Whoever turns their back after this, they are the rebellious ones. They are the rebellious ones. Because as I said, the prophets took the oath that they will convey the message each other, they will support each other. And... After knowing all of this, if any of the followers, if they turn their backs, then they are the ones who have rebelled against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the messengers they claim to follow, their, their messengers themselves, Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, all of the prophets prayed behind who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. In uh, Isra, when he went for Isra and then Mi'raj, in uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, they all prayed under 
behind the imamship of the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we'll stop here today inshallah with that um, and we'll continue with the next set of verses.